Welcome back, my dear student. In the previous class, we have learned the expression for the energy in particle in one dimensional box. That is, we learned this expression that is E en is equal to n square h square by 8 m l square, where uh, n is the quantum number, that is, the energy is quantized h is the Planck constant and m is the mass of the particle and l is the length of the one dimensional box that is the box is like this again I am drawing it the, the length is l that is if I assume that the dimension is along x axis then here x will be equal to 0 and here x will be equal to l and this is x axis. Okay. And again, I am telling that the potential energy inside the box is equal to 0 and outside it is V infinity. We have discussed all those things and energy for this kind of system is given by this equation. I could not remember the equation number that is that must have been your exercise book or uh, most probably that is equation number 8. Okay. Now, let us analyze this equation today. Our target is to discuss to some extent, to some detail this expression for particle in one dimensional box. Now, what will be the lowest possible value for the energy of particle in one dimensional box? Obviously, it will be for n is equal to 1 that is E1 will be the lowest possible energy that is 1 square h square by 8 m l square. This is the lowest possible energy that means this is equal to simple h square by 8 m l square. What does it mean? This means that the energy of the particle, the energy of the particle will never be never be 0 even at absolute 0 even at absolute 0 that is 0 Kelvin it will have some energy and it will go to and fro inside the box and the value of the energy is the minimum energy is 8 m 8 h square by 8 m l square that is the minimum possible value of the energy and this will be found even in absolute 0 and that is why this particular energy that is E1 this is equal to E1 is called the 0 point energy because in absolute 0 even in absolute 0 the molecule uh, the particle will have this amount of the energy and that is why it is 0 point energy. Okay. Now, let us think another situation I am clearing the canvas one minute it is not working I do not know yes uh, yes let try to determine the difference between two consecutive energy levels that is now our target is like this we already know that en oh, it is not working why yes en is equal to n square h square by 8 m l square now our target is to find out the energy between two consecutive layers that is say E n and E n plus 1. I mean maybe it may be E 1 and E 2 or it may be E 2 and E 3 and so on. In general it will be E n and E n plus 1. Now our target is to deduce a relation for this. What is the energy difference between two layers? Let us say energy difference between E n and E n plus 1 is given by del E n and its value will be equal to instead of n square when 
n value is n plus 1 that will be actually n plus 1 the whole square the uh, whole square of this and 8 m l square that is that is the energy for E n plus 1 and del E n will be equal to this minus n square h square by 8 m l square ok. And now we will take common of h square by 8 m l square. So, the equation will be like this n plus 1 and whole square of it minus n square and in the outside there will be 8 m l square. And you see this h square by 8 m l square is nothing but the 0 point energy and we have designated that 0 point energy as E 1 that is when n value is 1. So, we can now write n plus 1 and whole square of it that means n square plus 2 n plus 1 minus n square and instead of h square by 8 m l square we can write E 1 that is the energy for the first layer and this in n square and n square will cancel out ultimately the relation will be reduced to 2 n plus 1 E 1. So, del n is equal to I am writing here in fresh del n del E n will be equal to 2 n plus 1 E 1. This is a very important relationship ok. Say this is equation number uh, 9 ok. So, this is equation number 9. Now, you put different values of n here ok. I am reading I am deleting this clearing the canvas ok. So, the relation is write it down again here del E n will be equal to 2 n plus 1 E 1. Now, what will be the energy difference for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2? If we consider two level that is E 1 and E 1 plus 1 that is that means E 2 ok. You know this is the energy difference del E n is the energy difference between E n and n plus 1 and that is why I have written here 1, 1 plus 1 since the value of n is 1 here. So, what is the difference between the energy level between E 1 and E 2? So, del E 1 is actually the energy difference between the layer E 2 minus E 1 and what will be its value and its value will be 2 n plus 1 E 1, 2 n plus 1 means here n is equal to 1. So, 2 into 1 plus 1 E 1 E 1. So, 2 plus 1 actually 3 E 1 that is the energy difference between the first two layer first two layer. Similarly, if you calculate del E 2 that is the energy difference between the layer E 2 and E 3 you will find out that its value will be its value will be just 2 unit will be increased that is 2 in, since it is 2 n plus 1 that is actually it will give you different odd numbers. So, it will be 5 E 1. Similarly, E 3 that is the energy difference be between E 3 and E 4 that will be equal to 7 E 1 and so on. Now, you see one interesting point here. You see as the quantum number is increasing, the energy difference between two layer is also increasing. For example, here you see the first two layer energy difference is 3 into E 1, E 1 is constant 3 into E 1, but for the second layer it is I mean energy difference between E 2 and E 3 that is 5 E 1. So, energy gap will be higher and in case of E 3 again the energy gap is much more higher. So, now if you plot this what will happen? 
and again you see this energy has no dependence on the x axis. So, what will be the value of x is equal to something? The energy difference, energy will remain same. It will depend on n, it will depend on h and the length of the box and the mass of the particle. But it does not depend on the position of the particle since the expression is n square h square by 8 m l square. Clear? So, this is 0 and this is l and this is x axis. So, at every point of x the energy value will be same for particular for a particular energy level. So, this is E1 0 point energy okay, and its value will be h square by 8 m l square. Next energy level will be E2 its value will be 2 square h square by 8 m l square and the, this gap energy gap is given by del E1 and we have just learned that its value will be 3 1 okay. and next just extend this line to some extent. Okay. Next you see E 3 the energy difference between E 3 and E 2 is 5 E 1 that will be greater than of course E 1 E 1 is 3 E 1 it is 5 E 1. So, this gap is 3 E 1 and this gap is this gap is will be higher than this gap that is E 2 and E 1 and it is actually 5 E 1. Okay, this gap is 5 E 1 that is del E 2 and this is, will be equal to 3 E 1. So, del E 2 is greater than del E 1 and similarly as the quantum number will increase this energy gap will continue to be increased and next layer say if you draw its height will be much more higher say it will be here okay much more higher and so on as the n value will increase the gap layer the layer gap will also be increased so this is an interesting point this is the plotting of energy for particle in one dimensional box there are several other important as aspect of particle in one dimensional box as far as the energy in is concerned. I am deleting this, hope you have write it down. So, this is this, that was the point 1 that as the uh, quantum number increases, n value increases, the energy gap also increases. Let us come to point number 2 that is I have already told you that the energy value will not change with x because the energy expression is n square h square by 8 m l square. So, no x is there. So, with x the energy value, we change in x the energy value will remain constant. So, this is the point number actually 2 energy, 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 remain constant. with change in x, change in x, x value and that is why this type of system is known as the conservative system because the energy is remaining conserved. So, this type of system is called the conservative system. Conservative with respect to x axis. Okay. And number three, you see other dependency of the energy on different parameters. We know E1 is equal to h square by 8 m l square. That means this energy E1, I have actually put 1 for n, and that is why the equation has been reduced to E1. Okay. So, for n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2 or n is equal to 3 for any value of m, what I am going to just right now talk will be valid. So, e1 is inversely proportional to the square of the length of the box that is particle that is e1 is directly proportional to 1 by l square and e1 is also inversely proportional to the mass 
because h is constant and this 8 is also constant so we can get this type of relationship this type of dependency of energy with l or with m so what does it mean if the box size increases increases the energy gap the energy gap the energy gap between two layers between two layers will decrease decrease and eventually or large system or large system it will be continuous so well there will be overlap for the different energy gap and just like classical mechanics will get continuous continuous energy continuous energy just as classical mechanics so no quantum effect will be seen in case of large value of air that is for large box and also if the mass of the particle increases then also it is inversely related so if mass also increases increases same thing will happen that is daily will decrease decrease and we know why this is because we know daily is equal to 2n plus 1 to u1 u1 will decrease and that is why the daily, daily will also decrease that is the energy gap will decrease energy gap will become closer and closer and more massive particle for closer and closer and ultimately they will march in this way okay so with increasing value of m the energy gap will decrease that is for large macroscopic body what will happen ultimately the energy gap will be decreased to such extent that it will seems to be continuous and that is for large body also we do not experience any kind of quantum effect okay number so so we have got actually two conclusion that for large box we will not find any quantum effect and also for mass having higher mass macroscopic mass no quantum effect will come into play the classical mechanics will govern the behavior of the macroscopic property but if you consider say this is this is say number four points number four points if you consider the atomic system atomic system say electron will be there it has very low mass and dimension is also in the angstrom level dimension is also very low so a is very low m is also very low and that is why in case of atomic system we could not expect the energy gap will overlap with each other but they will remain well separated like this and quantum effect will come into play and in case of lower mass or a small box, we will find the quantum effects and quantum mechanics will then govern the behavior of the electron in atomic system. So this is the last contribution. We will in the next class discuss um, about psi that we have yet not evaluated the constant A for the wave function. We will do that in the next class and after that we will practice some problem and we will finish the quantum mechanics. After that, bye bye.